Hello, welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Pubarama, and in today's video, I'll be ranking every single sports car available in Grand Theft Auto Online. Now, originally, I thought this was a good idea. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna rank every sports car. It'll be a fun, quick, and easy video. Well, it will be fun, and it will be easy to make. The problem is that this is how many sports cars there are in Grand Theft Auto Online. Yeah, there are over 99 sports cars. What the heck is this? What the heck is this? Why are there so many sports cars? So, um, yeah, we're gonna be starting off alphabetically. So we got the Alpha, the Banshee, the Bestia, the Fudo. Actually, this is the Blista. And, uh, yeah, so we're just gonna be making our way through each one of these cars. If you enjoyed today's video and you'd like to see more like it, please consider smashing that subscribe button down below because this is an absolute pain in the butt to record. But without further ado, let's get straight into it without wasting any time and start off with the Alpha. Now, the Alpha is a $150,000 vehicle. It's got a top speed of 117.75 miles per hour, making it just about in the middle of sports cars at 60th place on its top speed. It's not very fast. It's not very slow. It's just average. And that's also the exact same for the lap time at one minute and five seconds. So we can see here, the Alpha's got okay handling, doesn't really spin out at all unless you're turning the corners too sharp, but overall it's fine on handling, fine on lap time. Its acceleration's a bit on the slower side, but uh, nothing you really got to worry too much about. For $150,000, I'm very easily going to rank this vehicle at a 7 out of 10. It might have gotten higher if it wasn't ugly, but I'm going to be honest, I do not like the way the Alpha looks. There are people out there that probably really like the way this car looks, but for me, yeah, I'm just not a huge Alpha fan. I think it looks pretty ugly, especially when you compare it to this next vehicle, being the Viper, or otherwise known as the Banshee. The Banshee's $126,000 to get your hands on, so it's a bit cheaper, $25,000 less. The Banshee has a top speed as well of 117.75 miles per hour. However, its lap time is a bit slower at 1 minute and 6 seconds, putting it two places behind it at 64th place instead of 67 on overall lap time. So the Banshee looks nicer, but it does have the downside of handling, I guess. I mean, I think the Banshee's handling is really good. To me, it seems like the overall acceleration is the major problem with the scar and why it's not further up on the list. But the Banshee's still a fantastic vehicle to drive. It's really fun to look at, and uh, for how old it is, it's honestly a pretty solid sports car, so I cannot say really anything too bad about it. I would rate the Banshee also a 7 out of 10. It's really cheap. It's just about the same as the Alpha on handling and mobility, everything like that. It's really just down to which of the two cars you like looking better. Next up, we have a fairly expensive car when you compare it to the previous two, but not that expensive in the grand scheme of things, the Bestia GTS. Now, the Bestia is all-wheel drive, and it definitely makes up for that in the lap time and the top speed. It has a top speed of 118.75 miles per hour. That's right. We've jumped up a total of one mile per hour. And you can see here that it doesn't have any grip problems whatsoever because it is all wheel drive. It handles very well, sticks to the ground. Amazing. So that's one thing about the Bestia I really like. It is a Ferrari, so it sounds amazing. It's got a decent top speed, as I said. And because of that, it does finish pretty well in lap time at 41st place out of the 99 sports cars and its top speed finishes 57th place. So it's still pretty smack dab in the middle for performance of sports cars in Grand Theft Auto, but not bad at all, to be honest. It's pretty solid, and I would easily rate this car another 7 out of 10. The price tag's a lot higher than the other two cars, so because of that, I think it still equals at around a 7 out of 10. Next up, we've got a solid 1 out of 10. There are people that like the Blista, and I know there might be people in the comments that are going to be like, oh, why'd you rate the Blista so bad? The problem with the Blista is it's slow. Its top speed is 103, making this the second slowest sports car in Grand Theft Auto at 98th place. That is pretty dang bad, let's be honest. Now, it's cool looking, it's got a bunch of lights, and it's really fun to drift in. You can see just turning very slightly, the car will drift. But, oh, sitting at a 1 minute 15 second lap time, putting it at 99th place. This is the slowest sports car in the game in lap time. So that just shows you how bad this vehicle is at really just about everything. It's fun to drive, and it definitely is a unique vehicle. 
Um, but I'll be generous and give it a 2 out of 10. That's really all it gets. There's nothing special about it apart from the drifts. And it's a cool looking vehicle, but yeah. Now the Ballista and the GoGo -Go Space Monkey are the same vehicle, just with different names. So nothing too much of a difference there. Next up, we have the Buffalo. Now the Buffalo is just your average run-of-the-mill sports car. It comes in at a price tag of $35,000, which is cheaper than the $42,000 that the Ballista has. Not only is it cheaper, but it's faster at a top speed of 112.25. It's quite a bit slower than the Banshee and the Alpha, but it's also like five times cheaper, so I guess it does make sense in some ways. The Buffalo is decent on lap time, though, at 1 minute 8 seconds, putting it in 87th place. It's not a good placing by any means, but, I mean, it's not awful. I definitely would have expected this car to sit a lot further back due to its really lackluster top speed. So, yeah, I'm actually not that disappointed with the Buffalo, and it's not bad at all in handling, I will say that. It's a rear-wheel drive car, it's got four seats, so it'll be nice, especially if you got a lot of friends you want to hang out with, but apart from that, nothing really all too special about the vehicle. We also have the Buffalo S, which is honestly just about the same as the normal Buffalo, which is weird. You would think the Buffalo S being the sporty version is better, especially judging that it costs 96000 but its lap time is 1 minute 8 seconds, basically the exact same lap time, and its top speed is also one or 112.25 miles per hour, so... The Buffalo S is essentially the exact same vehicle. It looks cooler, but I'm not sure why Rockstar didn't make this car have a better engine, top speed, or something like that. It just is a sportier looking Buffalo. So, uh, yeah, a bit disappointed with this vehicle, to be completely honest. It doesn't even deserve a lap around the track. It's going to sit its spot right here in the rear of the previous Buffalo. Okay, well, next up, we move on to another Buffalo, although I'm just going to ignore this Buffalo because it's really not... It's the same thing. Once again, it's just another buffalo, this one being the Sprunk Buffalo. All right, now I think this one is the Calico, if I'm not mistaken, and it is the Calico. Now, the Karen Calico is a pretty cool-looking vehicle, but oh my god, is it expensive. This vehicle sits at a price tag of $2 million. But you'll notice this thing is fast. Compared to the other vehicles so far, this is a much faster car, sitting at a top speed of 121 miles per hour. It's got some sick upgrades on the front, so the Calico definitely one of my more preferred vehicles in the list so far. Now, the Calico is not only fast, but it's got a pretty good lap time of 1 minute and 3 seconds, putting it in 26th place and 32nd for the lap time. So, not bad at all. It's got a good top speed, a good lap time, it's fast, it's got pretty good handling overall, and it's got some awesome upgrades. But, two million dollars oh boy that is an expensive price tag to be asking for this type of car i'm gonna rate it a seven out of ten i would do an eight out of ten because it, it is a fun vehicle but for two million dollars I think you can do better. So that's why the Calico is unfortunately not doing as well as you would expect it to. Now we move on to the Carbonazar, Carbonazare. I never know how to pronounce it. Now, I'm giving the Carbonazar a 8 out of 10. Why? One simple reason. This reason right here. It has a literal convertible roof, and not only that, but it's one of the coolest convertible roofs in the game because of how it works. It's a price tag of 195,000, which is cheap, and it's actually pretty fast. A top speed of 119.5, putting it just below 50th place at 47 on top speed, and the lap time's one minute, five seconds. So it's not only got a pretty decent lap time, it's not only an absolutely sick looking vehicle, but it's got one of the coolest mechanics for the convertible roof in the game. So I actually really like like the Carbon Azari, and it's the first car I'm giving an 8 out of 10 in this list so far, just because of that super cool mechanic it has going for it. All right, now we are done finally with the first list of vehicles, and we move on to the second list. Let's take a look at what we have here. We are starting off with the Comet, so we're starting off on this side. I have the list of the vehicle's names written down because I have all their stats written down as well, so yeah, we're going to go over to the Comet. Now, the Comet costs $100,000 on the dot, and for $100,000, it's actually a really good vehicle. Top speed of 119.5. It's got some really cool spoilers, I gotta say, so so it's pretty mobile as we can see here and it's got a lap time of one minute five seconds so the comet's overall a pretty good vehicle it's fast really quick to acceleration it's 46th place in lap time uh, not 46th place in lap time 46th place in top speed 55th place in lap time so not an incredibly fast vehicle but overall it's a comet it's a vehicle that's been in the game since original day release and the fact that it's even comparable with half 
of the majority of sports cars in Grand Theft Auto Online. Honestly, it's pretty surprising, and it allows the vehicle to do pretty well overall. Now we have another Comet, this one being the Comet Retro Custom. Now, I absolutely love the Comet Retro Custom. It's 645,000 to upgrade it, but you also have to own the normal Comet, so in total, it's going to drop you down about 745,000 plus the upgrades. This is one of my favorite looking vehicles in the game when it comes to upgrades. It's got a lap time of 1 minute 5 seconds, once again, sitting just about the same at 58th place for the lap time. Top speed wise, though, it is a bit faster, sitting at a top speed of 121.25. So if you're going for top speed, this vehicle is going to be slightly better than the normal Comet. However, it does have a bit worse handling, so it's really down to your personal preference. I think this vehicle looks absolutely amazing. It's one of my favorite looking cars, as I said in the game. The spoiler options are amazing, which is why I'm actually going to give this vehicle an 8.5 out of 10. It's just so good. The Comet, I'm honestly going to give an 8 out of 10 as well, just because it's such a cheap vehicle at 100,000 for the handling and performance it does give. So we got a whole bunch of Comets here. Next up, we got the Comet Safari, which, for any of you that are unaware, is one of my favorite cars in the game, period. The Comet Safari is fast, it's absolutely fantastic on off-roading, and it's pretty cheap. It's only $710,000. This vehicle is a top speed of 120. So it's 39th place on top speed. It's not the fastest, but it's also quite fast to keep up. It's got a lap time of 1 minute 7 seconds. So it's not very fast. It's 78th place on lap time, but that's because this is an off-roader. Look at this thing's suspension. That is some beefy, beefy suspension. Because of that, I am going to rate this vehicle a 9 out of 10. Because you're not buying this, oh, well, I'm a bad driver, but you're not buying this to be your generic sports car. You're buying this to be an off-roader with speed, power, and maneuverability and because of that I think the Comet Safari is an absolutely underrated gem as I said it's incredibly cheap and for the way that this car is meant to be driven it is really impressive how good it is so I actually really really like the Comet Safari and uh, I always suggest every time it's on sale even when it's not on sale just to pick up the car and try it out because it is so dang fun next up we have the Comet SR if I'm not mistaken this is honestly a pretty average looking Comet but while it may be average looking it's actually a pretty impressive vehicle on all overall its statistics. It's a price tag of $1.145 million. So it's not that much money. It's definitely expensive, but not the most expensive vehicle. And honestly, the lap time and handling really make up for that. It's got a one minute, one second lap time. Yeah, you heard that right. One minute, one seconds, 0.962. So basically one minute two seconds but that is still the best in this list so far and it's half the price of the other vehicle the top speed is 122 as well so not only does this vehicle have ninth place in handling yes you heard that right ninth place on lap time for the sports class but as well its top speed is 25th place so this is a great vehicle on top speed on handling it's a porsche it's a sleeper car it looks very small looks very quaint and simple yet it's one of the better sports cars in the game when it comes to all of its overall overall handling attributes and statistics going for it. So yeah, I actually really like the Comet SR and I definitely would suggest to never underrate a vehicle just because it looks a bit lame. Now this is the Comet S2. Another very weird and underrated vehicle. Now, the Comet S2 is not as fast as the normal Comet. It comes in at a price tag of $1.4 million if you have the trade price, $1.9 if you don't. has a lap time of 105 and a top speed of 123. I gotta be honest, the upgrades you're seeing here are possibly the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life. I did not upgrade this car. They were just fully upgraded when I got them spawned in. So, just keep that in mind. The big reason why this car is not great on its overall lap time and top speed well, its top speed's actually good. It's 123, which puts it in 23rd place. But the reason why it's not that good when it comes to handling is because this is a tuner vehicle. And the tuner cars are a specific class of their own that are meant to race against each other. So it makes sense that this handles like a lot of the other tuners in the game and not specifically a lot of the sports cars that can't race in the tuner series. So do keep that in mind. I, uh, I think that this vehicle is a bit different in that category. Um, also, for Comet SR, I'm going to rate that car a 10 out of 10. I'm not joking. The Comet SR is an S-tier vehicle. It has everything going for it, and the fact that it's super cheap of a price tag for what it is, is a really good deal. For example, this is the Comet S2, and for $1.4 million, it's a worse car than the SR in every way. So I would not suggest to get the S2. It's a cool-looking vehicle, but there's really not much going for it. But don't worry, we have another S2, this one being the S2 Cabrio. So let's see how the S2 
Cabrio stacks up. Well, it's 51st in lap time, actually better than the normal S2, and it's much faster in top speed, sitting at a top speed of 129. Yes, you heard that right, 129, putting this in eighth place in the sports class, just one ahead of the Comet SR. Now, this vehicle is actually really good for that. You can see here we are speeding along 106, 107. Car doesn't accelerate very fast, and this is the unfortunate part. It may have that top speed of 129, but look at how long it takes to accelerate. It's not the fastest at that, which is definitely its big problem. But still, the fact that it can reach a speed like that is pretty dang nice overall. Its handling is okay. For how fast it goes, the handling should definitely be you would think better, but I guess that's the downside of the vehicle is that it's going so fast you don't really get much handling to make up for that. I think it's a fun vehicle. It's once again a pretty expensive car sitting at the price tag of $1.8 million. So do keep that in mind, but overall not a bad bang for the buck. Yeah, I would rate it about mm, seven and a half out of 10. It's too expensive to be an eight, but I'll give it a seven. Next up, we have the Coquettes. We've got the original Coquette, which I absolutely love. One of my favorite vehicles. This is a $138,000. Has a top speed of 119.25 and a lap time of 106.33. For the price tag, this is honestly a really good vehicle. I think it's based off of Z06 in real life. I could be wrong, but either way, it sticks to the ground really well. It's got good handling. It's just not the best on turning, but as you can see, no problems whatsoever on turning it actually handles pretty dang well the lap time is 70th place so it's nothing amazing but top speed is smack dab in the middle at 50 seconds so it's a fast vehicle it's got decent handling and it looks really nice i love the way corvettes look so overall not a bad car the coquette really gets everything done well it's a fun vehicle to drive and yeah i've really got no complaints for the vehicle it's a 7 out of 10 it looks nice it definitely needs some new livery options i think if it had more customization it would be really cool but unfortunately Unfortunately, it doesn't. Now we move on to the newer and more expensive Corvette, the Coquette D10 at 1.5 million. Now the Coquette may be more expensive, but it is the seventh fastest sports car, sitting at seventh. So it's uh, pretty fast, 130 miles per hour. I like how I just said it's the seventh fastest sports car sitting at seventh, sorry. My brain has to look at a lot of numbers right now. But yeah, it's a fast car. It's very fast. And not only that, but it gets a lot of speed when driving over little bumps and things like that, so that's great. Lap time is actually surprisingly decent at 104. So not only is it 33rd in lap time, which is not bad for what the vehicle is, but the fact that it goes 130 is great. It's got lap time and top speed, and it's not that expensive at 1.5 million. I mean, it's definitely not cheap, but the fact that there are some sports cars that go over $2 million, I'm actually not gonna rate this vehicle too bad at all. So yeah, not bad. I have no problems with this vehicle and it's definitely a solid eight out of 10. I like the way it looks. It's a really, really nice looking car. It's a C8. So uh, yeah, no problems with that. Also, sorry about my dog barking. Uh, my dog's probably playing with somebody in the house, so very unfortunate for me. But either way, fun vehicle, not bad for the price tag, and uh, can't really complain. Next up, we have the Ubermach Cypher, a vehicle that I don't really know all too much about, so that's why I have the statistics of the vehicle. The Cypher has a top speed of 113.5. That is not very good. I expected this vehicle to have a much better top speed. Even though its top speed is really lame, it has fantastic handling. I have to say, a lap time of 104.965, that's a really good lap time for a vehicle that is incredibly slow. So yeah, it's actually not that bad. I mean, it is an expensive vehicle. It's 1.162 million if you have the trade price. It looks cool. I'm a big fan of BMWs, but overall, man, I can't say a vehicle that's this slow is really that good of a price tag. I thought this car was going to go like 120 easily, but yeah, the fact that it only goes 113, nah, I'm giving this a 6 out of 10. I'm really disappointed in that top speed. Beamers are supposed to have power. That's the whole point of buying them. But, oh well, that is the Ubermach. We also have the Obey 8F Drafter, which is another car that looks a bit similar. I like the 8F Drafter. It's a, it's a fun-looking vehicle. I don't know where it is on this list. I guess I'm going to have to start searching instead of actually just... Uh, the, the list I'm using is on Bruffy's website, and it's alphabetical, but it seems like it's not the same alphabetical as the, uh, the list I used for my cars here. So I'm just going to type in the cars. The 8F Drafter comes in at a price tag of 718000 
not expensive at all. It's got a top speed of 117.5. So it's not slow. It's not fast. It's pretty mediocre on its overall speed. I think the car looks really nice. It's kind of an in-between mix of a Mustang on the front and an Audi. So I really like the front of the car. And it's got a lap time of 103.531, which means even though its top speed is not the fastest, it's still quite a good lap time, putting it in 25th place. So I really like this car for $700,000. It's a really good deal in my honest opinion, and I'm actually going to give this car an 8 out of 10. It's really, really solid for everything considered. It looks nice. It sounds really nice. I love a big old girthy engine, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to give the 8F Drafter an 8 out of 10. Really, really nice vehicle overall. Let's make our way all the way down to the other side and start off with the GB200. Now, the GB200 in real life is based off the Ford RS200, a rally car. A very, very fun rally car at that. Now, the GB200, let me just type this in. A uh, boop and uh, oh, I, I think I mistyped that big time. Yes, I did. I cannot type. GB20. Alright, there you go. And there's the GB200. This vehicle has a top speed of 114.25 miles per hour. It's got a lap time of 1 minute 6 seconds. So not very fast, not a great lap time. So what does this vehicle have going for it? Well, first of all, it's just really fun to drive. It looks awesome. It's really fun to drive. Whoever customized this car, it looks terrible, I gotta be honest. But the car looks cool when you get it fully kitted out. And it's also just really fun to drive, especially on dirt, because this is a rally car after all. I don't know why Rockstar doesn't have a specific rallies class, kind of like the tuners, a subdivision, but unfortunately they don't. I think that'd be a really good idea, though, because rally cars are really their own little category. So this vehicle's a little special because it is going to drive better off the road than really on the road. It's $940,000. I would give it a 6 out of 10, honestly. It's just not fast enough. It's not really on par with the rest of the sports cars, especially for the fact that it is quite an expensive vehicle. It's not a bad car by any means. It's just nothing special either. Now we make our way to, I'm pretty sure this is the Fudo, if I'm not mistaken. Everybody likes the Fudo. Even I like the Fudo. If I remember correctly, it's not actually that slow of a vehicle. The Fudo sits at a top speed of 119.25 miles per hour. Now, does the Fudo GTX have a different speed? Actually, it does. 119.8 miles per hour. So, we are in the Fudo GTX right now. It's slightly faster than the normal Fudo. And that's actually pretty fast. Its lap time is awful. It's 1 minute 11 seconds, putting it in 94th place. It makes sense because the car is meant for drifting. So, it's really good at drifting as you can see, but it's really bad at handling because of the fact that it does drift well. This is kind of just like a much faster, uh, Lista, if you think about it. So that's really the best way I think of the Fudo. It's a fun vehicle. There's nothing really too special about it, but I don't know. It's fun to drive. It gets the job done and it's decently mobile. So nothing really too much to complain about there. This is the normal Fudo, just your normal run of the mill Fudo. Now, as I said, the Fudo is a top speed of 100 and I think 19.25. Yeah. So it's a bit slower, but basically the same lap time at one minute, 12 seconds. So even though there is a slight difference between these two vehicles, Honestly, I just go for the normal Fudo because the normal Fudo is $9,000 and the Fudo GTX is 1.6 million. Like, really, Rockstar? Really? Why would you make them the same exact on handling? It really, in my opinion, the Fudo GTX should have actually had good handling if they wanted to make it really, really compatible to the price tag it sits at. But for 1.6 million, you've got to be joking me. I'm giving this Fudo a solid 8 out of 10. Not only is it fast, but it's fun to drive, and you're not really buying it for the speed. You're buying it for the fun. The other Fudo, 4 out of 10. The fact that it is so expensive actually makes me angry because all it has is more upgrades. It's really a, a frustrating thing. Next up, we have the Fulicide. Fulicide, I never really know how to pronounce it. It is spelled F-U-S. Fusillade? I don't know. I always, yeah, I guess it's the Fusillade, not the Fulicide. The Fusillade. Fusillade. It's at a top speed of 117.75 miles per hour and a lap time of 1 minute 8 seconds. Now, you can actually find this vehicle for absolutely free, but if you don't want to find it, you can buy it for $36,000 on Southern San Andreas. It's a pretty cool vehicle. I don't love the way it looks. It's kind of ugly, if I'm going to be completely honest, but it's fast. It's a great car if you're a beginner because it has some upgrades. You can put a spoiler on the back. It's got a bumper. 
I don't know. There's nothing really special about the car. This is definitely one of the more lame cars added into Grand Theft Auto Online, but it's still a decent vehicle on its overall handling. And if you're uh, a poor player, honestly, pick one up, throw it in your garage, even if you don't want to upgrade it. It's a decently fast vehicle, and it definitely can be a bit of fun to drive. All right, well, we got to get around this graveyard of cars I've parked here. I can't even get through these spoilers and make our way to the next vehicle being the Furore GT. I think that's what it's called. There's just so many cars to remember the name on. The Lampadaddy Furore. I was right. I think that's a U-F-U-R. Let's try that. Enter. And I uh, don't see it. I don't see it. I made the mistake. I need to type in more. Uh, Furore. Boom. And there it is, the Ferrari GT. $448,000 is the price tag to get your hands on this vehicle. It's got a lap time of 1 minute 8 seconds, 0 .502, and it's got a top speed of 120.25. So, not the fastest vehicle. Really, the biggest problem I have with the car is there's no upgrades. Like, literally nothing. The car looks amazing. This is one of the nicest looking sports cars, in my opinion. But why is there no spoiler option? Why is there no bumpers? Why is there no side skirts? I mean, this car may not look it, but it is fully upgraded here. This is really sad, and I actually get disappointed when Rockstar does stuff like this, because what's the point of making an absolutely gorgeous car if you're not going to do a single thing to it? So, I'm going to rate this car 5 out of 10. It's fast not amazingly fast though and it's really not anything else either it's just fast that's it it doesn't have a great lap time it doesn't have great maneuverability it's just cool looking but because of the terrible upgrade options i'm actually kind of disappointed next up we have the flash gt which is a pretty fun vehicle flash gt is 1.670 or 1.6 million dollars it's not the most expensive but it's pretty dang expensive for what it is it's got a lap time of one minute three seconds and a top speed of 116 so it's 31st in overall sports for lap time and uh 69th place for top speed it's not the fastest but I will say this, this is a rally car, so it's going to do really well as you can see sticking onto the off-road terrain. What that means is that I actually think the handling and top speed are pretty reasonable for this vehicle, and I'm actually going to give it a solid 8 out of 10 on the overall rating because of how good this vehicle is. Yes, it is expensive, but currently this is the best rally car period in the game. It handles amazing, it's got everything going for it that you'd want in a rally vehicle, so yeah, it's pretty dang solid. I really have no complaints for that vehicle. Now we make our way to a vehicle that is honestly extremely underrated, the Feltzer. The Feltzer is just awesome. It really is awesome. The Feltzer has a top speed of 119.5 miles per hour, a lap time of 1 minute 3 seconds. Yeah, you heard that right. This vehicle is in 18th place for the sports class when it comes to lap time and its top speed puts it in 45th. So that means it is about one fifth of the percentile when it comes to lap time. And for top speed, it's also about 50% percentile. The fact that this vehicle is only $145,000 makes this an absolutely fantastic car. It looks amazing. It handles really well. It's got great upgradability for how old this vehicle is. It's got a big old wing you can put on the back, a big old diffuser. I really think the Feltzer is one of the most underrated vehicles in Grand Theft Auto Online. And uh, yeah, you should definitely, definitely pick one of these up if you don't have it. Really just an absolutely amazing vehicle. Well, look at that, guys. We've barely made a dent in this list of vehicles at all. Crazy. Well, next up we have the Euros, which is spelled E-U-R-O-S. Now, the Euros is a pretty expensive vehicle, just like all of the tuners. It's $1.8 to buy without the trade price and $1.35 million with. The Euros has a top speed of 116.5 miles per hour and a lap time of 105. So, not the best lap time, not the best top speed. It's 56th in lap time and its top speed is 68th place. But the Euros looks pretty cool. Pretty sure this is based off of Fair Lady, so... Yeah, there's really not much to say about the car. It's fun to drive, it's fun to have a bit of fun in, but apart from that, I wouldn't really be picking this vehicle up for lap time or top speed. I'm going to rate this vehicle a solid... Hmm, 
L let's do 7 out of 10. Also, the Felter, 10 out of 10. Absolute 10 out of 10 win. It is such an underrated vehicle. Okay, next up, another 10 out of 10. Already, right off the bat, I can tell you that this is a 10 out of 10 because of what it is. It is the Elegy. It is by far one of the most enjoyable cars to drive in Grand Theft Auto Online. It has a top speed of 118.5. Not incredibly fast, but it's a lap time. Get ready for this. One minute, two second lap time. Yeah, one minute, two seconds. This is 14th place for lap time. If I'm not mistaken, this is like the second fastest lap time vehicle we've gone over so far today. That is insane when you think about it. A vehicle that is free, that came out game release day for Grand Theft Auto, is still one of the best lap time sports cars. It's amazing to drive. It's based off a of Nissan GTR. I don't know how anybody doesn't like this vehicle. It is such a strong and formidable opponent to use, and I absolutely love the Elegy. So I would highly suggest, if you don't have the LG to get your hands on it. It's free. There's no point to go over price when there literally is none. Just what a nice car. Now, the next car is another LG, but this one is the Retro Custom. Now, the LG Retro Custom stays at a sports class. Some of the uh, sports cars turn into supers like the Banshee 900R and the Sultan RS, but this car stays as a sports. It goes to a top speed of 115, so it actually gets slower, and its lap time also gets worse at a minute and three seconds. Does that make any sense to you? This vehicle gets worse on lap time and top speed compared to the previous version. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, so if you were getting this vehicle for the lap time and top speed, don't. You're definitely going to be making the mistake. If you're getting this vehicle for the looks, because it is a 90s, 80s Nissan, then yeah, it's an absolutely amazing looking vehicle. It's fun to drive, and it handles decently well. So if you're going for that aspect of the vehicle, it's pretty dang fun. It's not the most expensive at 900000 upgrade, but it will cost you a lot on upgrading the vehicle itself on individual parts, because each one's like a $15,000 addition. So overall, it's probably going to cost you close to about 1.4, 1.5 million dollars to finish upgrading this vehicle, but honestly, it's worth it. This is such a nice looking vehicle. The Elegy is such an underrated car as it is. I really think that more people should be taking advantage of it. All right, all the way down to the side of the list again, and we have another Porsche, this time being the Growler, the Fister Growler. Now, I like the Growler. I think it's a vehicle not many people know much about. It sits at a price tag of $1.627 million, so it's expensive. It's not the most expensive so far, but it's definitely expensive. But if you get the trade price, you can get it down to $1.22 million. So it's not that bad when it comes to its overall pricing. Lap time is 1 minute 4 seconds, putting it in 38th place, and it's got a top speed of 121.5 miles per hour, making this a decently fast car but not the most fast out there. There are definitely vehicles that can handle better. Overall, I really like the Growler. I think it's a fun vehicle. It definitely can get the job done. And let me know in the comments what you guys think about the Growler. But yeah, I think it's a fun vehicle and it's a bit underrated. That's how I feel like a lot of Porsches are. The, nobody really talks about them, even though they really are great vehicles for doing so many things in. We've got a NASCAR vehicle now, the Hot Ring Saber. The Hot Ring Saber is, well, it's a weird vehicle. It's cheap. It's $830,000. But honestly, it makes sense it's cheap. It has no real upgrades. It's just a livery, and that's about it. Now, when it comes to top speed, it's pretty fast. 121 miles per hour. But honestly, a bit disappointing. You would think that this vehicle is like 140 or 150, judging that NASCAR in real life goes upwards of 180 to 190 miles per hour on some of the straightaways. So... Yeah, I don't really understand why this vehicle is so far down the list on top speed at 29th place, and especially the lap time at 74th place. Like, really? Why is a NASCAR so bad on maneuverability and lap time? That makes no sense to me. And because of that, I'm honestly really disappointed. I'm going to give this car a 6 out of 10. You always expect a vehicle like this, especially when it's NASCAR, to just be good because it's a NASCAR. But no, it's a pretty lame vehicle. The Hot Ring Saber definitely could do better if it was faster or had better maneuverability or one or the other. Really, one or the other would make it great. But because it doesn't have either, it is a bit of a bummer. So now we're going to move on to the Immorgan, which is another pretty interesting vehicle. Um, I just need to spell it. I-M-O... 
RG. All right. And Morgan. There you go. 2.165 million. I'm pretty sure that makes this the most expensive vehicle on today's list. Now, the Morgan is an interesting vehicle. It has an incredibly fast lap time. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, the fastest lap time so far at eighth place, one minute, one second, 0.327. It's got a top speed of 107 miles per hour. So you might be asking, well, how is it possible this vehicle has such a good lap time, yet such an absolutely awful top speed? And it's pretty simple. This is an electric vehicle, if I'm not mistaken. Well, maybe it's not. It doesn't sound electric, but I think it's a hybrid. Maybe. I could be wrong. Somebody can correct me in the comments. But if I'm not mistaken, I think this is a hybrid with a very, very unique engine. And because of that, while it may not feature the highest top speed, it does feature a really, really good overall lap time. And it handles really dang well. So that's the best way I can describe the Amorgan. It's a really underrated and unique vehicle. And try it out. Super duper fun and weird. But you'll notice when you're driving slow and you press on the gas, it makes no sound because it's electric. But it's also got like a, it's got some sort of gas engine once you pick up speed that also gives you a bit of extra horsepower. Next up we have the mini, the Issy Mini something, I, I don't know, it's the Issy Sport Rally or something like that. Yeah, it is the Sport. There's also a Rally and I'm not sure if the Rally is under the same category, but the Weenie Issy Sport is a pretty, uh, boring vehicle. It's $897,000. And for $897,000, it always makes me sad that this vehicle is actually really good. It looks ugly. Like, it really does look ugly. But you would never expect that this vehicle is a lap time of 1 minute 2 seconds. Putting it in 10th place. Yes, that's right. This vehicle managed to squeeze into 10th place when it comes to the sports class just because of its fantastic handling. The lap time is not great, but I mean, the fact that its top speed's only 114 miles per hour makes this a really, really good vehicle on its overall top speed with the lap time paired. I just never expect a, a freaking weenie issy to do so well on handling, especially when it's such a poor time on top speed, but yeah, absolutely fantastic. Also, I should say the Morgan. I'm going to rate out of like 10. I'm going to say an 8. It's really expensive, but it does have an absolutely fantastic lap time to make up for that expensiveness. Now, the GTO, if I'm not mistaken, is the fastest lap time car in Grand Theft Auto Online as of right now. So let me see. GTO. Boop. And the GTO is a price tag of 1.965 million. But as I said, it is the fastest lap time at a 59.727 lap time. So this vehicle is pretty dang fast. It's got a top speed of 127.75 miles per hour. So not only is this vehicle very fast, but as well, it has an incredible lap time. It's really just the best of both worlds. So I would easily say the Italia GTO is an incredibly and criminally underrated vehicle and I would definitely suggest to take a look at picking it up if you don't have one already especially if you have a lot of money to blow just an absolutely fantastic vehicle to try and mess around with so yeah the GTO great great car it's pretty fast and as well you got a really cool speedo in the front that you can read so yeah not bad not bad at all got really tired and took a nap but I'm back and I'm back in action baby we're starting off once again here we are with the next car on the list the Itali RSX. Now, the Itali RSX is by far the most expensive sports car that comes to mind. Maybe there'll be a more expensive one later down the line, but I'm pretty sure this really is the most expensive sports car in the game. It is $3.5 million if you don't have the trade price, and even if you do have the trade price, it is still a whopping $2.5 million. Why is this car so expensive? Well, it does feature a one minute lap time, which means that it is the fastest lap time so far, sitting at fourth place. Pretty dang fast when it comes to lap time, and really, really impressive. The RSX also has a top speed of 135 miles per hour, so it's a fast car. It's a really fast car, and it's got a really good lap time, so it's definitely warranted that price tag, but I still think because it is so dang expensive, it's really not worth the price when you can get other cars that are way cheaper that still have pretty similar performance. Now, the Jester is an absolutely amazing car, in my opinion. It has a top speed of 118.75 miles per hour, which isn't the fastest. It's 56th other than 
the 99 sports cars. But what is really, really impressive is the lap time at 1 minute 3 seconds. This lap time on such an old car made it one of the best handling sports cars for a very long time in Grand Theft Auto Online, especially back in the golden ages of GTA. So this vehicle is still in 28th place, meaning that you could very easily go up against a lot of the modern sports cars nowadays in Grand Theft Auto Online, and if you're a pretty decent driver, honestly have a very, very competitive chance of beating a lot of the modern sports cars. So. I love the Jester, I think it's a great vehicle, it's based off the Acura NSX, and it looks amazing, and when you add into the fact that it's only $240,000, it's a 10 out of 10, I mean, it's definitely a 10 out of 10. The RSX gets like an 8 out of 10, it's really expensive, and that's really what takes away the two points. Now, we also have the Jester race car, and what I want to do really quickly is take a look if the Jester race car does have any performance differences between the two, and it's got a top speed actually a little bit faster at 119.25 miles per hour instead of 118.75. The lap time on the normal Jester was 103.763, and on the Jester race car, it's 103.363. So, what I usually suggest to do when it comes to the Masakro race car and the Jester race car is just get the race car version because it is slightly faster and slightly better. The price tags are almost identical. It's only 350000 for this vehicle compared to the 240000 we said it was for the normal Jester. So it's really not much of a difference on their overall price tag to make you buy the cheaper one. So I would suggest to go for the Jester race car. I think it looks amazing, as I said. One of my favorite looking cars in Grand Theft Auto. And the fact that it handles so dang well, the fact that it's actually really fast, and I should point out this is in 20th place for a sports car's lap time. Think about that. A vehicle that was released basically the day this game was out is able to hold up still in 20th place over 100 sports cars now being added in Grand Theft Auto Online. All right, also I do want to apologize. Uh, my game is lagging a bit. Maybe it's because my computer is thermal throttling. For any of you that are unaware, because I haven't really talked about it too much, but my laptop, which, or not my laptop, but my main computer, which had a 3090 and it died. Um, so it's getting repaired right now, and it's been about a month, so that's why I've had to slow down a bit on the, uh, content on the channel. However, while it's being fixed, I'm using a laptop to record all these videos, which has a 3060, uh, G GPU in it. Obviously, it's a mobile version, but still, it's, uh, it's impressive what it's able to do, but I think every now and then it thermal throttles and the game lags a bit, like, right there, so I do apologize if the game does do that. Now, what we're taking a look at right now is the Jester Classic. A $790,000 sports car, one that everybody knows and everybody wants because it's a Supra! Now, this vehicle is fast. It's got a top speed of 119.75, which is basically the same as the Jester race car. Unfortunately, Rockstar did not give the Supra incredibly good lap time at 1 minute 6 seconds. A bit unfortunate, I really wanted this car to be up there in maybe 20th place or something like that, but it's not slow. It's 65th at the 99 sports cars, so yeah, it's just not as good as I really think it should have been for what it is, but I still really love the Jester Classic. It's one of the coolest looking sports cars in the game, and you can't really go wrong with it. Now we have the newer version of the Jester, which is the Jester RR, sitting in at $1.99 million, or $1.97 million, and with the trade price $1.45 million. So it's expensive. Double the price tag of the Jester before that, and uh, like five times more than the original Jester, so it's pretty dang expensive. Is that warranted? Well, it's actually pretty dang good. It's got a top speed of 125 miles per hour. I think the car looks amazing. I love the way this car looks, and when it comes to its lap time, it is a 1 minute 4.5. So it's 48th out of the sports in lap time, and it's 17th in top speed. I actually think it's a pretty good combo. The lap time's not amazing, but because of the fact it does feature that nice, girthy top speed, you are able to feel very comfortable when driving down stretches on the highway to not really go all that slow. So it's actually a pretty nice car. I'd give it an easy 7 out of 10. It is a little too expensive, in my opinion, to be anything more than a 7 out of 10, but not a bad car by any means. Okay, well now we have the Masakras over here we're going to be breaking into in just a moment, but first we have the Neo. Now the Neo is honestly one of the best cars when it comes to the sports class, and I know this for a fact. I haven't even 
pulled out the Neo Statchet, and I know it's just an amazing car. First of all, top speed 125.75 so very very fast top speed but not only is this car incredibly fast but it has a lap time of one minute 0.996 putting it in seventh place for the sports class that is incredibly fast when you think about it this is one of the best sports cars by far it looks amazing it's got a super detailed interior and uh yeah i would definitely suggest to just buy the neo if you haven't tried it out it's not the cheapest at 1.9 million, but I really think that out of a lot of the expensive cars we've taken a look at so far, the price tag is definitely warranted on this vehicle, because it's not like the RSX where it's ridiculously overpriced. It's got fantastic customization, the car looks amazing in my opinion. So overall, really just amazing vehicle all around, and I definitely think is a super fun car to mess around with. Now as I said, we have the two Masakras next. I'm going to enter the base Massacre first, which is just the Massacre. I don't know how to spell it, so I'm just going to type an M-A-S-S -S on the, uh, the search, and perfect. So, the normal Massacre is $275,000. It features a top speed, oh, well, <laughs> I knew that was going to happen at some point, but it features a top speed of 121.75, putting it in 27th place, and it features a lap time of 1 minute 3 seconds, putting it in 30th place for the sports class. Now, that's actually really impressive right there. I have always liked the Masakura race car variant more than the Jester race car. I'm not sure if it's because the Masakura always felt like it was better handled, but personally, I just like the way this car looks more. I think this is one of the nicest looking cheap cars in the game. The fact that this vehicle is only $200,000 and it handles as well as it does, it looks as nice as it does, and it's got such cool upgrade ability, means that it really is by far one of the best bangs for your bucks if you're a newer player in Grand Theft Auto Online. I'm definitely going to be making a video on this car, uh, just talking about why it is such an amazing vehicle. I should drive all the way up here because I feel like every time I get out of the car, I have to run all the way up to the front. But now we get to try out the Masakura race car. So, lap time 1.103.8, and the top speed is 121.75. Now we pull out the Masakura race car, which has a top speed of 121.75, and basically the exact same lap Lap time. So, unlike the Jester, where it does have a higher top speed and better lap time, this vehicle still sits at a lap time of 103.8 and a top speed of 121.75. So, uh, it's actually interesting. I, this vehicle must not have really any difference between the two, uh, but apart from looks. Now, I think this looks amazing. I really do think that the Masaka race car is one of the coolest looking vehicles in the game, but to keep in mind what I just said, you can save a pretty decent chunk of money. The Masaka race car is 385,000 and the Masaka is only 270, so you can save about 100 grand purchasing the vehicle and judging that there's no difference between these vehicles on it appears anything, just go for the cheaper one, especially because you can kind of customize it to your own look rather than doing the fixed livery that you'll get on the race car variant. I think it looks amazing though. I really do love the Masaka race car, so it's an absolutely amazing vehicle to get your hands on. Definitely try it out if you have not already. Next up, we have this, the Ocelot Lynx. That's what it was. My brain was drawing a blank there. The Ocelot Lynx is a beautiful car. For many years, this was my favorite looking sports car in the game. It's not the best. It's got a lap time of 1 minute 7 seconds, putting it in 75th place, and it's got a top speed of 121.5. So it's not very fast. It's not great on lap time, but I think the car just looks amazing. This is one of my favorite looking vehicles, one of my favorite sounding sports cars in Grand Theft Auto Online. I really like Jaguars, and I really think that this is a perfect homage to the Jaguars in real life. Unfortunately, it is quite expensive at $1.735 million. So, if you're like me, and you've got $83 million sitting in your account with nothing to do, then it's a perfect car to buy and drive around. A lot of people buy so many cars, but they never really drive them. I really like messing around with all of my cars in GTA, and that's why I'm definitely thinking of shifting a lot of my content rather than money-making methods, because let's be honest, once you've made all the money-making methods, there isn't much more to make on them. So what, I, what I'm definitely thinking of doing is shifting my content more towards car content in GTA, because I, I really do love cars. It's such 
a, a fun thing for me to mess around with. Next up, we have the Locust, which is honestly a really fitting name for what the vehicle is. Now, the Locust is one of the most exciting sports cars in the game. It's $1.625 million, which is not cheap, is the best way to word it, but it is pretty fun to just drive around and you're not going to be buying this for lap time you're not going to be buying this for top speed it sits at a top speed of 119.75 putting it at 43rd place and it has a lap time of 104.9 putting it in 52nd place so it's not amazing on lap time it's not amazing on anything but it's super fun to drive it's got this really quick steering that allows you to very easily as you can see drift it which is honestly so much fun when rolling around corners you can very easily just for example this one drift around a corner and uh, it very easily hold the drift as well. Just a super fun car to mess around with. I think the Locust looks amazing. It's exactly what the car is meant to be. It's meant to be this little dinky vehicle that just runs around like a Lotus. And uh, yeah, so I, I like the Locust. I think it's pretty dang fun. Wah! Oh my god, this thing weighs literally nothing. It only weighs 920 kgs. That is insane. All right, well, obviously the Armored Kuruma was going to make this list at some point. There is not... Um, there, not many Karumas, to be completely honest. Is it K-U? It is K-U-R. I thought it was K-A-R, but I was like, wait a sec, that doesn't sound right. So, we've got the Armored Karuma, which we're going to start off with at $698,000. The Armored Karuma has a lap time of 109, putting it in 90th place out of the 99 sports cars. Honestly, not awful. I mean, it's not great, but... It's not terrible, and it's got a top speed of 109.75, which is quite awful. This is not a fast car. It trades all of that top speed, all of that maneuverability, and honestly, it's not that bad on turning, but it's not nearly as good as all the other sports cars. Also, the Speedo is completely broken, so never look at the Speedo and the uh, Karuma. But, yeah, it's not a bad car by any means. It's fun to drive, and obviously the main reason you're going to be driving the Armored Karuma is for that armor. But I should point out that if you pick up a vehicle like the Shafter V12 Armored, it's not only going to go a lot faster than the Armored Karuma, it's not only going to handle a lot better, but it still does feature some explosive resistance, which this vehicle doesn't, and it has semi-bulletproof windows. I do like the Armored Karuma, but I do feel like in some cases, especially in a GTA Online lobby, there are better options, especially the Amani Tech vehicles, which kind of are just better. So now we have the Base Karuma, which I like a lot, actually. A lot of people always want to get the Armored Karuma, but the base Karuma is only $126,000, and it's got some pretty good upgrades. First of all, top speed's only 112. It's faster, it's three faster than the 109, but it still is only 112. But its lap time is actually pretty dang impressive at a 106.8, putting it in 71st place. I mean, it's not a good lap time, don't get me wrong. This vehicle is not very fast when it comes to its overall handling or anything like that, but the fact that this vehicle actually has a comparable lap time to some of the other sports cars and it's super slow is pretty dang nice. I think the main thing the uh, Karuma is really meant for is going off-road because this is based off some sort of Subaru WRX Mitsubishi Lancer, something around that area. Uh, judging that it's Karen, I would expect Mitsubishi, but... Uh, you're never too sure when it comes to Rockstar. I think the car is pretty dang fun, though, and uh, they look almost identical. They both look amazing, so I really like both the cars, and they are very, very fun to mess around with. Next up, we have the Komoda, which is honestly a vehicle that not a lot of people know too much about, but is honestly criminally underrated. The Komoda is a four-seater. And it's one of the best four-seaters in the game. First of all, it's very, very fast. 123 mile per hour top speed. It's got a lap time of 104.265. And with the trade price, you can get it for 1.275 million. That means the Komoda is quite cheap for the sports class. It's got a four-seater. And it is 39th in lap time and 22nd in top speed. So it's fast. It looks great in my opinion. And it's got everything going for it. Plus, it sounds so deep. Oh, yeah. So I really like the Komoda. I would definitely say that this is an incredibly fun vehicle to drive around with. And it's probably one of the best four-seater sports cars available in Grand Theft Auto Online. I think the Shafter V12 is another great four-seater. And I guess we're going to have to see how the Shafter V12 compares. But... It still is, overall, a really, really good vehicle for everything considered, and uh, definitely don't pass up the Komoda. A lot of people don't even know this car exists, but honestly, 9 out of 10. Easy 9 out of 10 there. 
All right, next we have a car that is probably going to get a very, very low score, and this is the Hijack Chameleon, and that is spelled K-H-A-M, and that's really all i got to type in. The Chameleon is $100,000. It's a sports car, and, well, obviously, but it's an electric sports car is what I was going to say. Now, I think the Chameleon looks really cool. I think it's honestly one of the coolest-looking electric cars in the game. A lot of people don't even know the Chameleon exists. The problem is it is the slowest sports car in Grand Theft Auto Online. It's 102.25 miles per hour. Uh, you can see it. This is my top speed here. Oh boy, isn't that real fast? So uh, that's the problem with the Chameleon. I really think it should have gone like 110, but I guess that's what Rockstar wanted is they said, you know what? If we're going to make a sports car, it's going to be really dang slow. Now, the nice thing about a sports car like this is at least it does have decent acceleration because it is electric. So that is one of the benefits. It's got a lap time of one minute, eight seconds, which is actually not that bad for being the slowest sports car in the game 82nd place which means yeah it shaves off about 15 16 places from the other previous cars actually not that bad when you think about it it's definitely nothing fast but i'm still surprised that the chameleon is able to shrug off so many other cars that are a lot faster than it just because it is electric and it has that power through the turns now this here is the ocelot jugular oh yeah the juggy jugular now the jugular is pretty expensive it's a 1.225 million dollar car and if you get it with the trade price it's 918,000 it's not ridiculously expensive but it's still pretty expensive now while the Komoda is a really good four-seater this car kind of craps on the Komoda this vehicle has a lap time of 102.363 putting it in 13th place for lap time and the Jugular has a top speed of 126.5 putting it in 12th out of the 99 sports cars so the Jugular is definitely better than the Komoda the problem with me for the Jugular is it's kind of an ugly car. It's not bad looking, but it's just, it's too big in my opinion. I think the Komoda really is that perfect size of a sports car that you would want for a four-seater. This looks more like a sedan, if you want my honest opinion. I still like the look of the car. It looks nice, and it's, it's a cool vehicle, but eh, I don't know. I, I just think that Looks-wise, it's a bit worse than the Komoda, and judging that you're barely gaining that much of a performance difference, I'd say the Komoda, as you can see here, it just looks so much nicer, especially on the front. But both very good cars, and honestly, for only $900,000, the Jugular is an absolute steal of a vehicle. All right, well, let's make our way all the way down to the side again, and now we have the Fister Neon. I think this is the Neon. Now, the Neon is obviously an electric car, and it's one of the better electric cars. It's based off the Porsche Taycan. It's $1.5 million, which is not ridiculous. It's got a lap time of 103.398. Sorry, my brain was trying to say numbers there, and they were not coming out correctly. But, yeah, not bad. It's in 19th place for the sports class when it comes to handling. And its top speed is only 114. So, you can see that this car has amazing handling. That's really what it makes makes up in. Now in real life this car is actually pretty dang fast, but even with that little fallacy aside, it doesn't really matter. The Fister Neon feels great for handling. It is a four-seater, which you can see in the back there, so if you like electric cars, if you like Porsche, and I mean, it's just a win. It really is just a win. You're in Porsche Utopia if you like electric cars. And the fact that it's got such a good handling coefficient, everything like that, plus the acceleration, I do think the Neon is uh, a bit of an underrated car, to be completely honest. A lot of these vehicles, I feel like the majority of people don't know all too much about. So that's why I figured I'd make a video explaining every single sports car. Now we have your basic Audi R8, otherwise known as the Obey 9F. Now, the 9F is just your average run-of-the-mill sports car. It really is. It's $120,000. It's got a top speed of 119.75 and a lap time of 104.125. Now, that is incredibly good. This car easily gets a 10 out of 10 when it comes to lap time and overall top speed. 120 is not bad for how old this vehicle is. I'm pretty sure this car was no joke released day one of Grand Theft Auto Online. And not only is it fast, but... <coughs> But its lap time... <clears throat> But its lap time is incredibly good at 104. A lot of people really don't realize how good that lap time is, but 
for a car this old, I mean, the handling is really, really dang impressive. It's only a hundred grand, as I said as well. So, uh, yeah, I mean, overall, it's an absolute steal of a vehicle. If you don't own one, I would highly suggest you pick it up. And, yeah, just overall fantastic vehicle. Now, I'm not sure if the Cabrio version, or I don't know what it's called, uh, but the if the OB9F topless is just as fast. So, it's a lap time of 104.125 and a top speed of 119.75. The 9F Cabrio has a top speed uh okay, everything's exactly the same. So I'm just going to drive this car off to the side over here, and we're going to move on to the next vehicle because there is not any noticeable difference between these two vehicles. Okay, now we have one of my favorite sports cars once again. I've got a lot of favorites, so I'm just going to say the my favorite ones because I've probably got about 10 or 15 of them. But this is the Obey Omnis which is based off of the Audi Quattro in real life. The Omnis is just a little fast sports car. It's one that I think is really underrated for how fun it is. The Omnis has a lap time of 107, so not very fast. It's 76th place, and it's got a top speed of 112. It used to have this bug where it would go incredibly fast if you drove it over any speed bumps, and it was a little bit busted on the speed, but Rockstar patched that, and it's not nearly as fast as it used to be. But there is a way to get this vehicle for absolutely free if you own the Criminal Enterprise Starter Pack like I do, because I was forced to get it when getting my GTA account. And even if you don't have it, it's only $700,000 to get your hands on this vehicle. It looks amazing. It's got a really cool interior. Overall, I love the Obey Omnis. It's all-wheel drive, handles amazing off the road, and it's just a fun little dinky off-roader. So try it out. That's really the best thing I can say about the Omnis. Try it out. It's a super fun vehicle, and you will not regret picking it up. We've got two of the same basic vehicles here. We've got the Paragon R and the Paragon R Armored. Now, I'm not sure if there's really any difference between these two vehicles on handling, so I guess we're going to find out. Now, getting your hands on the Paragon R is pretty simple. You just go to Legendary, you purchase it. Top speed of 123.25 and a lap time of 102.229, which actually makes this a very impressively good 11th place in the sports class for lap time and 21st place in top speed. So it's got a good mix of both. This is obviously based off some sort of Bentley, and I actually really like the look of this car. I don't like the look of this livery. It's absolutely terrible, but I do like the way this car handles. I like the way the car drives in general. Very, very fun car to get a hand of, and it's really just an amazing vehicle. It's $905,000, which is not expensive at all for what it is. A lot of people don't realize that, sure, there are vehicles like the RSX that are ridiculous on price tag, but you don't always need to drop the most amount of money to get a decent car. A vehicle like the Paragon very easily compares to some of the more expensive sports cars, as we can see, and really once you start getting down to that one second difference in lap time, that's really just down to driver error and skill issues. So that's usually what I say is that you can buy a cheaper car that's only two seconds off for $200,000 like the Masakro, and you'll do a really good job when it comes to overall handling and everything. Now top speed 123.25 and a 102.2 lap time, 121.25, but it is still the the same lap time at 102.361 basically yeah the exact same lap time so even though the paragon r armored is slower apparently it does not make a difference on lap time it must be because this car weighs more it actually has a better handling coefficient so the more you know but the paragon r is a very very nice car both of them are and the fact that you can get this one only for free by doing the uh house mission they're not house missions but they're a uh, loose chain i think it's called you have to do all the casino missions. Once you purchase a casino, you're going to get a call from Baker. Mrs. Baker, oh my god, we need your help. Oh, thanks for buying a casino penthouse. Uh, so you're going to get a call from her every 10 seconds, and then after that, and you complete them, you'll get not only like a six, seven hundred thousand dollar cash bonus for completing them, but as well, you're going to get the Paragon R armored for free. So pretty honest win, and I would highly suggest to mess around with the Paragon R armored. Very, very fun vehicle, and it's great for really everything it has going for it. So now we have this, and we all know what this is. It's the Ocelot Pariah, one of the best vehicles in the game for really anything. The Pariah has a top speed of, oh, that's the Paragon R I clicked on. I'm a doofus. There it is, the Pariah. Pariah has a top speed of 136 miles per hour, making it the fourth fastest sports car available in Grand Theft Auto Online if you're playing on HSW. However, I am playing on PC, which means HSW vehicles do not exist, making this the 
first fastest car in my generation of GTA. So it's a pretty dang fast vehicle. And when I say pretty dang fast, it is muy ridiculoso. Its lap time is also one minute 0.828, making this the third best lap time sports car in Grand Theft Auto Online. The fact that the Praia only sits at $1.4 million of a price tag makes this, as I always say, the most important sports car for any person that wants to do races to purchase. It's as simple as that. The Praia is cheap, extremely affordable for the average player as long as you're playing for maybe a couple days grinding money, and it is by far one of the best deals ever. The car regularly goes on sale for about $900,000, and you should pick it up every single time. Next up, we have the Penumbra. I never know how to spell this thing, so it's P. E N and that should hopefully be enough and yes it was. Then the Penumbra is a pretty fun vehicle overall. It's got a top speed of 105, which makes it the 95th slowest. So unfortunate. It's got a lap time of 1 of 1 minute 12 seconds. So 95th. It's 95th on both to be honest. The Penumbra is just a car. That's really the best way to describe it. I mean, it's literally free. You can find it on the streets. It's $24,000 on Southern San Andreas. It's just not a very special vehicle. It's got some cool interior, um, but I, I don't know. I really would never ever suggest to pick up this vehicle. They did give it some liveries though, which is a bit surprising. You would think when they gave it a bit of a livery option, maybe they would make the car a bit faster or something, give it a new engine upgrade. It would be really cool if you could retrofit engines like in Forza Horizon and Grand Theft Auto. That would be awesome if they did that in GTA 6, but... Yeah, what I will say is that the vehicle is mediocre at best. We have the Penumbra FF here, which is just the Penumbra, to be honest, but a lot better. The Penumbra FF is $1.4 million to get your hands on, and it has a top speed of 112.75 and a lap time of 104. So the lap time is shaving off 8 seconds, where the top speed is not a whole lot faster. I mean, this is still not a fast sports car. But it's the fact that it's got really good handling. You can see that here, that it's actually able to hold a decent time overall. It's a fun vehicle. It's a really nice JDM to just mess around with. But you're definitely not going to be setting any lap time records at 44th place. So, yeah, do keep that in mind. It's not the best vehicle, and it's just a fun one. But at least it's not the most ridiculously expensive vehicle compared to a lot of the other um, tuner vehicles. But still, nah. <laughs> That's really the best way I can describe it is just meh. It's a fun vehicle, nice to drive, wouldn't suggest to pick it up. I'm giving it like a 6 out of 10 because it still is really expensive and with not really much going for it, it's pretty mediocre. Now we've got a Tesla. I don't know if there's any other Teslas in this list, but the Coil Raiden is definitely a Tesla. So let's take a look at how the Raiden stacks up. It's a $1.4 million price tag, which is pretty expensive. It has a top speed of 113.25 and a lap time of 104.498. Basically the same as the previous car we just tested. The advantages with this car is, first of all, it's a four-door, and the fact that it is electric means that you can definitely handle a lot better around corners, especially being all-wheel drive. The interior is pretty dang mediocre. It definitely, you can see, has that Tesla screen in the center, that big old dash. But, um, yeah, there's not much really special about this vehicle. It handles okay. Yeah, it's... It's an SUV. In my opinion, this should be in the SUVs class because I'm pretty sure this is the Tesla model that is the SUV in real life. Um, it's not as big, and maybe I'm wrong because in real life, the Tesla SUV has gullwing doors, but either way, either way, it's a fun vehicle, and um, yeah, I wouldn't really suggest to buy it. I'm giving that also a 6 out of 10 because there's nothing special about it, but yeah, that, yeah is the best word to describe it. It's a car, it drives. Now we move on to the Mercedes, starting off with the Schlagen. I love the Schlagen, absolutely amazing vehicle. It's got a very, very good top speed of 125.5 and a very good lap time of 100 and, or 1 minute 3 seconds. So it's 24th in lap time and it is 16th in top speed. Not bad at all. And the vehicle isn't ridiculously expensive at 1.3 million. When you compare it to a vehicle like the Raiden, which is also 1.3 million, this thing absolutely slaps it out of existence. This car has a lot of upgrade options. You can literally change the badge color on the front. You got a lot of liveries. It's a Mercedes AMG. It's a fun vehicle to drive, it sounds amazing, and because it is rear-wheel drive and it's got such a wheel, weird wheelbase, you can do some absolutely fantastic drifts as you just saw right there. So, really fun vehicle overall, definitely would suggest to pick this one up, it's a fun, fun vehicle. I just want to point out that the amount of vehicles I've probably said the pickup at this point is like $20 million worth of vehicles, but 
I really do just have a, a love for cars in any game. It's one of the reasons why I do love GTA Online is that Rockstar has so many sports cars available. So it really is great to have all these options. Now we finally break into the two vehicles I've been wanting to talk about a long time now, which is the Benefactor Shafter long wheelbase and the Benefactor Shafter in general, Shafter V12. So let me just type that in really quick, Shafter. And let's take a look, first of all, at the long wheelbase. This vehicle is $208,000. And if you buy the long wheelbase, honestly, I don't know why you would. It's just a worse Shafter V12. That's all it is. Its lap time is 109.769, and it's a top speed of 109. It's not a great vehicle in really any way. Let me just pull up the Shafter V12 statistics to compare. Now, the Shafter V12 has a top speed way, way better, and its price tag is cheap it's 116,000. The Shafter V12 goes from the 109 this turd wagon has to a top speed of 124.25. This vehicle is 100 grand and has a top speed of 124. This is an instant 10 out of 10 when it comes to any cheap sports car in the game. Incredibly underrated. It also has a lap time of 1 minute 5 seconds. So, its lap time is not really where this vehicle's at. You can see right there, we just went off the road. But if you're going for top speed, and really cheap top speed, this is definitely the way you're going to get it. If you want lap time, go for a vehicle like the Jester, go for the Masakro, or go for the Obey 9F. But if you really want that overall straight line performance, a four-seater, by the way, which is absolutely fantastic, and a vehicle that has a big, girthy V12 engine, then go for the Shafter V12. It's really fun to drive, and I have always loved the Shafter. Such an underrated vehicle in Grand Theft Auto Online. hoo <laughs> All right, next up, we have no more Mercedes. I don't know if there's any left in this list, but this is a pretty fun car. It's the Hijack Rustin. I know nothing about the Rustin. I'm going to be honest. I have no clue how the car drives or anything like that, so I'm going to find out. It's $430,000, which is quite cheap, and it's got a top speed of 116.25. It's got a lap time of 108, so it's cheap, and honestly, the performance is pretty in line with the price tag. Um... But it's kind of like the Ocelot Locust, where you're just buying this vehicle to have a bit of fun. It's just a little dinky vehicle that you're not really going to accomplish much in, apart from just having a fun little drive around the track. And that's honestly all you should really want these types of cars for is anyway. So it does everything I expect it to, which is why I'm going to give it a solid 8 out of 10 on its rating, because I feel like it is an 8 out of 10. Oh my god, the amount of cars I just realized we have parked here. Alright, this one's going here. There you go. Next up, oh my god, we just gotta run through all of this, we have a Cadillac. Now this is a Cadillac, oh, never mind, it was blocking the car. I lied, I lied, we've got the Dinka RT3000 here. The RT3000 is a pretty fun vehicle. It's not the most exciting, but it definitely can get the job done. RT, oh no, my autocorrect is messing with me. There you go, RT. The Dinka RT3000 is, wow, I did not realize this car was that much money. 1.7 million. Now, to be fair, if you get the trade price, it's only 1.286, but still, that's so expensive. That is ridiculous. I never realized this vehicle was going to cost that much money. Now, the Dinka RT3000 has a lap time of 106.967, putting it in 73rd place. And it's got a top speed of 119.25. So it's not the fastest. It's not the best on handling. And the fact that it's this much freaking money, nah. This is a solid 6 out of 10. That's all it's getting. I'm, I'm not giving this car any leeway. I am disappointed. This car should be better either on top speed or lap time for the amount of dough you are dropping on this vehicle. Now, to be fair, it is in the tuner's class, which means it makes a little bit of sense, but not really. Some of the other tuner cars have a top speed upwards of 129, and they've got way better handling, so I don't really think that is a fair uh, judgment even there. I'm, I'm disappointed at the RT3000. I thought it was going to be really fun on handling. Now, we've got the Revolt now, the Revolter is 1.6 million. Honestly, I did not know this car cost this much money. I thought the Revolter was going to be your average Cadillac, maybe two, three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand. I never in a million years would have expected it to be this much money. Its top speed is 115.5, and it's got a lap time of 104.198. So it's not slow. It's got 37th place, and it does have some weapons on the front, which is kind of cool. I guess that's why it's so expensive. Um, 
but yeah, there's not much really special about it. It's decent on handling. It's a four-seater. It's got machine guns that you're never going to use because they're lame as hell. So, um, yeah, I think the Revolter is just an ugly car, to be completely honest. If it went a little faster, it would be fine. But it's just too slow for the $1.6 million price tag that has been attached to it. I was not paying attention. That's my fault. Um, we're not going to talk about that. I am very sorry, Mr. Corsita. I, I guess your car is going to be a bit dinged up when you, when you get into it. Oopsie. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let's take a look at this car. Wait. Oh, I was wondering how this car got here. I was losing my mind for a second. Then I realized I just smashed three cars up the, up the line. All right. Well, let's just, um, no, we'll, we'll drive this car after. I was, well, I thought I missed a car. I was like, there's no way I missed a car, right? So now we have the Anis Remu. All right, and here we go. The problem is I have my iPad up where I'm looking at the statistics of these vehicles, so I make sure I tell you guys everything correct while I'm also driving at the same time. So it is a bit of a pain. Now, the Remus is not ridiculously expensive. If you get the trade price, it's one million, so not too bad. And this vehicle has a top speed of 115.5 and a lap time of 106.773. See, this is a much more reasonable price tag for what the vehicle is. I don't know why the Dinka RT3000 is so much more expensive. Now, this vehicle is not the most amazing looking car. It's honestly not bad, but I don't know. It's, it's okay. It has a lot of upgrades, and those are some of the ugliest exhausts I've ever seen in my life. But I'll give it a 7 out of 10. It's not bad. It's not great. It's just an average sports car that if you like your JDMs, you will like this vehicle. I really think that's what the mainly tuners update was for, was mainly the upgrades and customization rather than the top speed and performance of these vehicles. All right, next we have this, the Raptor. And I don't think the Raptor is a vehicle many people care too much about, but I am actually a bit intrigued to see its overall performance. The Raptor costs $648,000. It's got a top speed of 103.25 and a lap time of 111.371, which is pretty mediocre, to be honest. The Raptor's got a lot of problems. First of all, if you drive over a little curb, it has the opportunity just to go, whoa, and spin out. So that's the first problem with the Raptor. The second problem with the Raptor is, um, why? That's just, the, it's just why. Why why would you buy this? I mean, honestly, it's a fun vehicle, so I can understand why you'll buy it. But it's definitely not a vehicle that I'll be picking up anytime soon. It's, um, it's interesting. That's really the best way to describe it. Whoa, off with your door. That was actually a really, really good, uh, door slam. All right, now we have the Dubachis again, this one being the Dubachi Rapid GT. Now, I don't actually know how the Rapid GT is on handling or performance. It's a vehicle that's been in the game since day one release. It's got a top speed of 119.5 and a lap time of 108.419. Now, I'm going to take a look really quick if the Rapid GT with its 119.5 is the same as the other Rapid GT, and yes, they are exactly the same lap time, so uh, that's something to keep in mind there. But, um... Yeah, there's not much special about this vehicle. It is a convertible, but it's not the nicest looking convertible in my opinion, especially with the roof on because it's just your average matte black roof. So it's a car, it's fun to drive, and it sounds nice because I think this is based off a of Ferrari of some sort. But um, yeah, that's really all there is to say about the vehicle. It's not the most exciting in any really category. So I'm not gonna bother to drive this one either. We're just gonna ignore that. And uh, let's start off with this vehicle here because I did push it so dang far out, which is the Karen Salton RS Classic. Just move out of my way. Now, honestly, I'm trying to find the difference between the Salton RS Classic and the normal RS. I'm struggling, I'm gonna be honest. This is the Salton, right? This is the Salton. RS Classic. Yes. And this here is the Sultan RS... It's the Sultan Classic. They look identical. I mean, look at these cars. They look identical. Uh, there's some cambering on the wheels, but there's really no differences between these two cars. It's so hard to tell the differences, which honestly disappoints me. I would like a lot more differentiation between these two vehicles, especially judging that the Sultan RS Classic is $1.8 million. Pretty dang expensive. The Sultan RS Classic has a top speed of 117.5 and a lap time of 103. So it is 21st in the sports class when it comes to lap time and 62nd in top speed. Not very fast on really either category. I mean, 20th place is good, 
but it's not good for the fact that, again, this car is 1.8 million, even with the trade price, 1.3 million, come on, man, the Praia will absolutely crap on this vehicle, so, once again, you're probably only going to be picking up this car for what it is, the Sultan RS Classic, it's a nice looking vehicle, I really like the look of it, and again, if you're into JDMs, a great buy, it's just not anything spectacular for uh, what, it, what it really is, so, that's just the best way to, uh, to describe it. hoo all right, but now let's break into the Sultan Classic, which is also expensive. Wow, I didn't realize that. The Sultan Classic's 1.718 million, with the trade price it is 1.288. Now, the Sultan Classic has a top speed of 100 and, oh my god, are you kidding me? So, the Sultan RS Classic is slower than the Sultan Classic. How does that make any sense? This is the base model. And it's a lap time of 102.606 and a top speed of 116.5. What? What? So why would you even buy the R? Okay. Well, I give up. I, I give up with Rockstar. <laughs> um, either way, though, pretty fast. 16th place for the sports class. And the fact that this vehicle is cheaper at 1.28 million rather than the 1.3. And the fact that it's better on handling. Get the Sultan RS. The, or the Sultan Classic. It's just a better car. This is actually a pretty solid car. I would rate this a solid 9 out of 10. It's not that expensive. It's a very good handling vehicle. And I think it looks really nice. So, yeah, not bad at all. I am pleasantly surprised with this car. And it did a lot better than I thought it was going to. Every now and then I'll be surprised with the sports car. And then I won't be surprised with the sports car. Uh, that one actually did surprise me. So, now let's make our way through the list here. We have the normal Sultan here. This is just just your run-of-the-mill car. It's $12,000 to get your hands on. It's got a top speed of 115.75 and a lap time of 105. That means that this vehicle, which is absolutely free, is just about middle when it comes to lap time performance in the sports class. I just want you to think about that real quick. A $12,000 car you can find on the street, which is a four-seater, is all-wheel drive, and has very similar lap time to the majority of cars we have gone over, some of them costing over one, $1.5 million. That is insane, and it shows just how strong of a contender the Sultan is for how long it's been in Grand Theft Auto. Absolutely amazing vehicle. I really hope Rockstar gives it some uh, future upgrades and liveries, just like the Penumbra got and a lot of these other vehicles, but... I guess we'll have to find out. Okay, next up we have the Civic in real life, or in the game the Sugoi. Now the Dinka Sugoi, it's um, it's a weird vehicle. I wouldn't say there's anything spectacular about it, but it's fun to drive. The Sugoi is 1.224 million, and the trade price will bring it down to 918,000. It's got a lap time of 89th place at 108. Why is the lap time so bad? I have no clue. It's decently fast, 120. It's just got the worst handling ever. I mean, look at this full turn here. Look at how bad this thing's turning is. Holy slow. So, it's a fun car. I actually think the Civic Type R looks really, really nice in real life, and they did a good job in GTA creating it, but I don't get why it's so slow on lap time. It should be a... I would expect this to be in the top 20 of lap times for what the car is, so I'm actually really disappointed in Rockstar on that one. They really let the ball drop low on that. Now we have a vehicle that a lot of people don't even know, the Streeter. Um, I think the Streeter is honestly really cool, and I forgot about it. I was just placing the cars down as well. Completely forgot this vehicle exists, but it's a $500,000 Mercedes. It's got a top speed of 111 and a lap time of 1 minute 12 seconds, but this isn't really a sports car, let's be honest. It's an SUV. It is literally an SUV. So the fact that it's in the sports class means that it gets sports car handling and sports car top speed for a vehicle that really isn't a sports car. Because of that, it's a really fun off-roader that a lot of people don't really think all too much about. And I think the Streeter's a pretty fun vehicle because of that. You'll purchase it on Southern San Andreas. And um, yeah, I would actually suggest if you're a big off-road fan and you wanted a vehicle that has some power, looks pretty cool, the Streeter is a very, very sick car that just kind of slipped under the radar and not many people know about. For what the vehicle is, I'm giving it an 8 out of 10. It's cheap, it's $500,000, it's an off-roader, it's fast for the SUVs class that it really should be in. Not bad at all, so I actually really like the car. This is the Dubachi Spectre Custom. I do not like the Spectre Custom, I'm going to be honest. Uh, I don't like the Spectre in general. I think it's an ugly car. It is $252,000 upgrade, and the normal Spectre costs $599,000. It's got a top speed of 121.25 miles per hour, and a lap time of 104.332. So it's not the fastest sports car, only sitting at 40th place in lap time, and it's 33rd in top speed. So neither of its statistics 
products are really that impressively good. And when it comes to the price tag, I mean, it's not that expensive, but I don't know, it's just not that unique of a vehicle either. The base Spectre is also just about exactly the same on performance and everything, so it's really just down to the customization and upgrades of which of these cars you'd like more. I just think the problem is it's too wide. I don't like how wide of a vehicle this is. It doesn't... It doesn't look right being as wide as it is. We can see here that the base model is a lot smaller, and because of that, I like the base model a lot more. And the fact that you don't really lose any customize or not customization, but speed, yeah, I would just suggest to go for the base model Spectre if you want to have a bit more of a streamlined car. Not nearly as wide, and I think it looks about a lot nicer. And honestly, not that bad on performance for what it is. It's only 599,000, and it's in 34th place for top speed, and 42nd for lap time. It's a decent car. It's nothing special, but if you like this type of vehicle, I think this is based off of Ferrari, but I could be wrong. Um, but if you like this type of vehicle, this is definitely not a bad shout if you buy the cheaper version. Benny's Upgrades is obviously going to sink you down a lot more money than you're probably willing to spend. So, uh, yeah, it's okay. There's nothing really special about the car. And I also just realized why why wasn't I parking cars on this side? I have parked all of them on that side, and I could have just been parking them over here. Now, the Dubachi 770 is... Uh, well, an amazing car, actually. I, I think it's an amazing car. 770 is super duper underrated. I don't know how to spell. I think they actually spell it 70. Uh, yeah, it is. It's 70. Okay, so let's do that. And, oh, I mistyped 70. All right, there you go. I found it. That actually took me a bit longer than I expected. Oh, I did it again. I was looking at the stats and drove into the rear of the car. Now, the Dubachi 770 is one of the best looking sports cars, in my opinion. I actually love the look of this vehicle. Not only that, but it sounds amazing, and it is incredibly fast. 123.5 top speed, putting it just in 20th place. So it's a very fast vehicle, and that's great. Not only is it fast, but it's got an okay lap time at 104.764. Not great. It's definitely a bit slower than you would expect for a lap time on this vehicle because of how impressive it is on everything else. But to be honest, it's cheap. It's only $695,000. That's really dirt cheap for what this vehicle is. And because of that, yeah, I think that it's a, it's a fantastic buy. Solid 9 out of 10 for how cheap it is, how fast it goes, how it looks. Looks definitely play a huge part into ranking that car. Next up, we got a little dinky Ubermock. This is the Ubermock Sentinel Classic. I really like the Sentinels. I think they're fun to mess around with. And the Ubermock Sentinel Classic is $650,000. It has a top speed of 117.25 and a lap time of 104.732, putting it literally one place ahead of the 770 we just used. It's a pretty fun vehicle. It's a Beamer, so it's pretty good at using that power, getting some drifts out, and uh, it's an old Beamer, which everybody loves, so how can you not like them? It's a very, very fun vehicle, it definitely can get the job done, and uh, it's just a, it's a cool, unique vehicle to mess around with, so there's really nothing to hate about this vehicle, and that's why I really do like the Sentinels. Now we have the Shafter, just your normal Shafter. We had the Shafter V12, the Shafter long wheelbase, and now we have the base model, and it's honestly a pretty cool car. I'm trying not to crash here. But uh, let's take a look at how the Shafter does, and uh, let me pull up the stats of this vehicle. It's, oh, it's not the Shafter, it's the Schwarzer, I'm sorry. I, I thought of the wrong vehicle. The Schwarzer is a pretty cool vehicle as well. I just need to type in the stats of the vehicle, and there it is, the Benefactor Schwarzer. It's got a top speed, honestly, of 117. Not bad. It has some really cool upgrades as well. Rockstar actually gave this updated livery, so the car actually looks pretty nice now, I have to say. It's not the fastest lap time of a, a 1 minute 11 second lap, so you do got to keep that in mind. It's going to struggle on that category there, but overall, it's not bad at all. It's fast, 117, and uh, it's a unique vehicle to drive. So I really like the Schwarzer, although I forgot the name because I'm a doofus, but um, you know what? Actually, I'm impressed with myself. I have gotten just about every single car's name correct so far, which is not too bad at all. So uh, yeah, not bad. Let's make our way now to the Serrano. The Serrano is another very cheap vehicle that is actually very impressive on its overall handling and everything going for it. It's 110,000. It's got a lap time of 1 minute 4 seconds and a top speed of 121. That means this is in the top 30 of sports cars for top speed, and it's less than 50th place at 47th when it comes to its overall lap time. That's pretty dang impressive. The Serrano's not the most amazing looking vehicle, but 
it's a very underrated car for how cheap it is and how common you see it on the road. It's, as I said, $100,000. It's $99,000 in uh, uh, story mode and $110,000 in online. I mean, that is dirt cheap. So I really like the Serrano. It's not everybody's cup of tea, but it's, it's a cool car. That's really the best way I can describe it. It's a cool car for how cheap it is. And once again, this is another car I have actually sitting in my garage. We also have this, the Drift Tampa. Now the Drift Tampa is fun. It's just flat fun. That's really all there is the best way to describe it. Let me pull up the stats. Uh, boop. Now the Drift Tampa is not the fastest vehicle, although apparently I can't spell drift, but uh, it's not the fastest vehicle. Oh god, oh god, I don't know how I didn't crash there. I wasn't paying attention, but 114.25 miles per hour and a lap time of 108. So, yeah, you will struggle a little bit on the overall lap time, acceleration, or top speed on this vehicle. It's not the most expensive, a million dollars, but the main reason, obviously, why you're buying this vehicle is to do this. You're trying to do some drifts. That's really all you're going to do with this vehicle, is do some burnouts, do some drifts, and listen to that roaring engine. So, that's what I'll say about the Drift Tampa. It's not a sports car. It's a muscle car that for some reason Rockstar was stupid and put into the uh, sports car category. Um, you know what? Honestly, I'm going to do the Corsita. I've crashed into this car so many times and it's my fault. I'll be up. Oh. Of course. Of course. I walked into the edge of my car and died. Oh my god. Uh, I have to run all the way back. Oh, go. Uh, we're doing the Corsita. This game is not stopping me. Let me go get up the Corsita st statistics. Corsita. And, oh, it, it auto-corrected what I typed in. And uh, there you go. Enter. All right, let me go into the Corsita. Let me, how am I going to get in this car without dying? Oh, God. Oh, okay, that works. That, that worked. There you go. All right, so even though I've beaten up the Corsita a decent chunk, this is an absolutely amazing looking car. It's kind of a better looking Neo, in my opinion, and the Neo is really good looking as well. Now, the Corsita has a top speed of 131.25. Yeah, you heard that right, 131. And it's got a lap time of 102.62. So, it is in 12th place for lap time, and sixth place for top speed, making this an absolutely fantastic car on both fronts. It's expensive, it's 1.8 million, but it's just about the same price as the Neo. So uh, yeah, I think the Corsita is amazing, really good vehicle, and pick it up. That's really the best way to describe it. If you're an avid race car driver, if you really like to do races, and you want a car that can keep up with the pack, the Corsita will definitely get the job done on both categories, and it's a really, really fantastic looking car. Now, personally, for me, I'm not going to use a Corsita in the races because I think it's such a generic car that everybody pulls out, but it still is a really, really good vehicle if that's what you're into. Next up, we have the Tropos Rally, which I can tell you for a fact without even looking up the vehicle is not going to be that fast. The Tropos Rally has a top speed of 119.5. You know what? I'm actually pleasantly surprised how fast its top speed is. Its lap time is 106, so it's 72nd for a lap time, and its top speed is 48th place. It's not bad, actually. I was expecting it to be a bit worse on its overall lap time and handling, uh, but this is a really, really fun vehicle. It is so fun. It's based off the Lancia Stratos in real life, which is an absolutely amazing little car, and it's cheap. It's only $816,000, so it's definitely not your fastest sports car, but it's not a sports car. Once again, it's a rally car. I'm not sure why it is listed under the sports category when it really isn't a sports vehicle. So that is something to keep in mind about the Tropos Rally. It's just a fun little car to drive around, have a bit of fun in, and uh, go rallying with your friends. This here is another really cool car. It's the Emperor Vector. I really like the Vector. I think it looks... Um, it looks cool. That, that's really the best way to describe it. It is a very cool looking vehicle. The back of it, I love the look of. I'm not 100% sure, but I think this is based off the Lexus RCF. I could be wrong. It's got a lap time of 1 minute, 3 seconds, 0.46. So you're putting it in second, or 22nd place. It's got a top speed of 115. So it's not the fastest, but the fact that it's got such a good handling coefficient, which you can see here, it very easily keeps up with the rest of the very modern sports cars. It's got a trade price of 1.3 million, and honestly, I think that's a pretty fair price for this vehicle. It's got a good lap time. It's very enjoyable to drive. It looks really nice. It's got a fantastic engine and yeah it's really everything i would expect this type of vehicle to be so not a bad deal at all and i would definitely say a solid eight out of ten for that car now we move on to this a very interesting vehicle the bravado of verlier now this is um a car that 
is actually really, really good. It's kind of ugly, I'll be honest. It's not kind of ugly, it's really ugly. But it's cheap. It's $695,000. It's got a top speed of 121.75, and it's got a lap time of 105. And for the price tag, it's honestly a pretty good vehicle. I just think it looks like two butt cheeks pressed against each other on the front. I really do not like the design of this car. I think it is incredibly ugly. But it's got some good customization, it's got a good top speed, and for the price tag it sits at, it's not a bad vehicle by any means. So that's really the best way to describe this car. Plus, you can also see the engine inside of the front of the car if you look down, which is really, really cool. But, um, yeah, it's just, I don't like the way it looks. That's the problem for me with this vehicle. Like, look at how stupid that door looks. It's tiny. I, just, I don't like the Verlier. I'm going to be honest. I really just don't like the vehicle. These two vehicles here, I'm not going to bother getting into because we both know these are not sports cars. It's the Dinka Vito Classic. And just to tell you these statistics of, let's just say the Vito really quickie. Quickie, yes. The Vito has a top speed of 78 and a lap time of 117. And the Vito Modern has 76 and a lap time of 117. So, nah, we're just not going to bother. They're fun to mess around with, but they should not be in the sports class. Let's be completely honest. Now, the Albany VSTR definitely should be in the sports class. It is an absolutely amazing vehicle when it comes to its overall top speed. Now, for some reason, it didn't come up when I typed in the name. So, I guess we got to do V... Uh, uh, I'm mistyping VSTR. Hopefully, that works. There you go. So, this vehicle is 1.285 million. Pretty expensive, but it is very fast. It is 126.25 miles per hour, giving it a 13th place for top speed. Not only is it very fast, but it's even got a decent lap time at 104.165. So, it's 36 in lap time, and it's 13th in top speed. So, it's a nice looking car. It's a Cadillac, which is very rare to see Cadillacs doing pretty well. And listen to that engine. Blah, 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 blah. I really like the VSTR. I think it's an underrated car. Not many people ever drive this thing. And uh, yeah, honestly, very, very decent vehicle. Now, it is a bit expensive. It's 1.3 million, but it's not that expensive. I mean, 1.3 million is pretty online with the rest of the cars we've gone into for today's video, and it it's pretty good on handling and performance for really what it is. Now we have the Anis ZR350. Now the ZR350 is a very, very fun car to mess around with. It's got a pretty ridiculous top speed of 1.6 million, but you can get it down to 1.2 if you have the trade price. This vehicle has pretty good handling overall, but its lap time is pretty poor because its top speed is pretty poor. It's only got a top speed of 117.5, putting it in 64th place, and it's got a lap time of 108 in 81st place. So. Yeah, it's a pretty mediocre car. I think it looks nice, though, and for the price tag it sits at, honestly, not bad. It's not a terrible deal. So, if you like the look of this vehicle, pick it up. I'm not going to diss anybody for picking up this car, because I really like the look of this vehicle, and I own one of these in my garage. So, it really is a fun, fun vehicle. Now, this here is a pretty interesting car. It is the Anis 300R. 300R is a pretty new vehicle, as we know, and we're going to have to take a look at how it does. It's $2 million. That is crazy, and there's no trade price, so just keep that in mind. It's got a top speed of 120 and a lap time of 103.881. So not only is it not very fast, but it's also ridiculously expensive. I mean, the car looks cool. Don't get me wrong. I do like the look of the front. I think the back could be a bit better designed, but not a bad looking car. But why is it so damn expensive, Rockstar? Why is this car $2 million? My freaking OB, Obey 9F can smoke this thing, and it's $100,000. That's really annoying. And if I'm not mistaken, Rockstar also removed this car from the game, so the majority of people can't even get it. Really? It's not like you'd want to get it. It's way too expensive, but still, really disappointed with Rockstar in that one. It's such a ridiculous vehicle. We also have the Tundra Panther here. Now, I really like the Panther, eh? Uh, I think that's how you pronounce it, the Panther, eh? But a uh, very fun vehicle. It's $2.2 .2 million. Has a top speed of 122.5 and a lap time of 106. Yeah, the problem is it's not the fastest in 24th place and it's in 66th place for lap time. The car looks really nice and it's fun to drive, but man, you just saw the problem right there. It's terrible, terrible rear end, which is very unenjoyable if you're trying to drive in a straight line and have no problems. I love the look of this vehicle. It's a fun car to drive and I always love the Alpine one A110 in real life, but it's just... It's not it, Chief. That's the best way to describe it. And once again, Rockstar moved this car from GTA Online because they're a bunch of douchebags. But either way, um, 
it's not worth the 2.2 million. So even though this car is not in the game as of currently, don't feel too bad. It's a ridiculous ripoff of a vehicle and I wouldn't get too mad about it. Now this vehicle has not been released yet. This is the Hot Ring Everon. By the time some of you might be watching this video, it is. So I put it in this list anyway. The Hot Ring Everon is a pretty fun vehicle. It's got a top speed of I do not know because it's not listed. So that's a bit unfortunate, but if I'm not mistaken, I did test this vehicle's top speed not too long ago, and it was close to about 121, 22 miles per hour. It might have been higher, but I know it was over 120. Its lap time is nothing impressive, so when it comes to this vehicle, essentially, I would say it's going to be about... 40th place for top speed and a lap time of about a hundred or one minute seven seconds That's what I would expect to see Bruffy get in this vehicle I guess we'll have to see how close I am when it comes out, but it's definitely not the best handling. It's a cool vehicle It's a fun vehicle. It's got a lot of customization, but there's not much really honestly all that special about it so that's the best way to describe this Whoa! vehicle oh my god it's always the corsita we're smashing into i'm sorry my dear corsita you are a very good car and do not deserve the hate but uh you are getting all the hate today next up we have the obey 10f now the 10f is a pretty fun vehicle we have the 10f wide body and the normal 10f we're starting off with the wide body which is a five hundred and seventy five thousand dollar upgrade from the normal 1.675 million dollars of the base car that means that to get this vehicle fully upgraded fully kitted out it's probably going to cost you about 2.5 million yeah you just heard that 2.5 million is that warranted well it's fast it's 128 miles per hour making it the ninth fastest it's also got a pretty good lap time of 102.546 in 15th place so i don't think the price tag is necessarily warranted i mean 2 million plus to upgrade this vehicle is ridiculous but at least on the plus side it does have the handling going for it and it's not like the dinka rt3000 where it's ridiculously expensive and then it also just gets a big letdown in the lap time it does have that going for it so i'm not really disappointed with this vehicle it's exactly what i expected it to be and i gotta say it looks amazing so i really like the car and i have no real regrets purchasing it now the 10f base is i'm pretty sure slower if i'm not mistaken let's take a look yeah it's lap time is 103.2 and it's got a top speed of 126 so it's a bit slower but personally i like the look of the 10f better i think that this bit more smaller look is a lot more streamlined and i like streamlined personally uh so i like the normal 10f better even though its lap times are is slightly different and it's a bit in favor of the 10f wide body it's not enough of a difference to really really warrant a, a huge difference in your lap time or anything like that you're not going to notice it so just keep that in mind now the sm722 is a fun vehicle it's a really fun vehicle uh the unfortunate part about the sm722 is that it's terrible i mean it's a 2.1 million dollar vehicle and with that 2.1 million dollars yes you do get a decent top speed of 123.75 which puts you in 19th place the problem is that's all you get look at this handling Look at the handling! It's so bad. It finishes in 105 lap time. I mean, that's bad. That's really bad, man. 50th place for a vehicle that costs $2 million is not a good look, Rockstar. It looks cool. Looks kind of like Shrek's nose on the front, but I like the vehicle, and uh, it's fun to drive. It really is a fun vehicle to drive. It's an interesting vehicle to look at. The interior is cool. I have no complaints about the decoration of this vehicle, and anybody buying it is obviously just buying it for the overall looks, but it's just not it. it. It's too expensive for what it is. Now we have another Uber Mach here, so let's go back to Uber Mach. Now, this vehicle is pretty fun. I guess I can't type in Uber Mach. It is the Sentinel Classic, so I guess we're just going to type in that, and this is the Sentinel Classic wide body at $700,000. It's got a top speed, holy crap, 127.25. That is incredibly fast for a vehicle like this, and it's got a lap time of 103. Honestly, I am very surprised at this vehicle. I remembered making a video on this not too long ago, but I kind of forgot about its top speed. That is really fast. It's 27th place in lap time, and it's 11th place in top speed. That is really dang impressive. Now, it's not cheap. The Sentinel Classic itself is 650000 and the Sentinel Classic wide body is another 700000 So you're going to have to add those together. It's going to be about $1.35 million just to get this car, and then you're going to have to drop another five hundred k on upgrades because it's Benny's, and then upgrade the engine and everything else. So yeah, it's probably going to be close about two million dollars to get your hands on this car fully equipped but it's fast and it's got a great overall 
honestly everything. So I'm a bit surprised at this vehicle and I'm going to give it a solid 8 out of 10 there. All right, we've got two more vehicles left. Let's first of all start off with the car that murdered me, which is the ZR380. Uh, yes, the ZR380 is a very fun vehicle. ZR, and let's see if that pops up. Boom, there it is. The ZR380 has a top speed of 140 miles per hour, making this the second fastest arena car, but it's also a sports car. So this is the fastest sports car in Grand Theft Auto Online, at least in the non-HSW, if you're counting this. And it's pretty cool in that aspect, especially because it is armored. It's completely armored. It can jump. It can drop mines. So, I mean, it's got a lot of really good things going for it that the average car does not have going for it. And the fact that it's also incredibly fast and I should also point out that the one I own is black. It has no armor on it because you can actually make this car look really cool if you don't put armor plating on it. So, uh, yeah, it's honestly a really sick vehicle. Come here, Corsita. You've got to get smashed once again because it's the Corsita after all. But yeah, ZR380, amazing car. It's expensive, don't get me wrong. It is 1.6 million to purchase, and then it's probably gonna drop you down another 1 million on upgrades, but I definitely think it's worth it. The final car we have is the Obey Omnis EGT. And the EGT is a very, very fun vehicle. Let me just type this in, EGT, and boom. The EGT is $1.8 million, but it's an Amani Tech vehicle, which means that, for example, if I try shooting out the glass on this car, it shouldn't break. Oh, I missed. But, oh, oh, wait, no, I lied. I lied. This car has explosion resistance. It doesn't have bulletproof glass. I forgot. My bad. My B. Now, this car is not very fast. It's a top speed of 111.5, and it's got a lap time of 104. So, it's not the fastest, but that's because it's meant for the survivability. You're going to pull up a grenade launcher through this vehicle, and it'll survive 12 explosions, where the average car will survive, oh, yeah, that's right, zero. So, yeah, I'm going to give this car a 10 out of 10, just because it's not meant for this category. It's meant for something completely different. But, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm tired as hell after recording this video. If you would like to see more like this, please consider smashing that subscribe button down below. This was absolutely ridiculous. But the good news is these were the two most profitable categories. The supers and the sports are by far the most. So if I ever do another one of these videos for sports classics or something like that, there are not nearly as many. At the end of the day, hopefully enjoyed today's video. Hope you learned a thing or two about the sports class and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.